Begin the current doubt in Sech of Sachem Dav Kuv Zayin. Begin nine lines down at the top of the Yavu, where the Gemara continues with a story related to the discussion of the previous stuff regarding that of eating before Kiddush and before Habdal. Shiz Kos Pekaz Zuchin Cheska Tarent Tam Dav Chem Shem is joining us for today's doubt. So as we discuss in today's daf are regarding the halachas of Habdallah, Kiddush, and Brachas Amazna drinks other than wine. How much wine does a person need to drink after making Kiddush? The Gemara will explain also when the Mishnah said, we're going back to the opening of the parrot, that said that uh, Arab Pesach is not supposed to eat Samach Mincha, which Mincha we told about? We know that there's two Minchas, there's Mincha Gedayla and Mincha Gitana. Mincha Gedayla is a half hour after midday, and Mechagitana is three and a half hours after midday, which these are both actually Zmanim of, as it relates to the uh, carbon Tamit Shalbein Arbayim, which either when it normally was brought was actually what we call Mechagidayla, or was actually Mechagitana, three and a half hours after midday. But on certain times, was actually brought, like on Erev Pesach, a half hour after midday. Those are two different Zmanim for when we dab in Mincha, also regarding when the, which the corollary is regarding the carbon Tamit Shalbein Arbayim. And some of them a half hour before that mincha. Again, the question is, which mincha are we talking about? Chamar Medina, literally translated as actually the wine of the country, but it's a beverage that's a wine substance in a given city. If they don't have wine, what they normally drink as a chashava mashke. Malay lugma is that of, of that a cheekful, which is that a person can fill up one side of his mouth on one cheek. And Isthmus is a very delicate person. So we're going to current daft. Regarding the halachas of Havdalah Kiddush on beverages other than wine. So, Amr Lay Mar Yenuko Mar Kashisha Rid of Chizor Vashi. They said, Zimlan Chada Ikla Mimel Asun. One time it happened, and from this story we're going to see halacha, that Amemer came to our town. We didn't have wine for him. So, I seen Lay Shikhar, we brought him beer. He didn't make Havdalah on the beer. Uvas, and this is a, a Pasig in Daniel. Uvas, he slept overnight, and Tavas, Zimin Hengedig, he was uh, afflicted, he didn't eat, he was hungry. The next day, we, we, we went out of our way, we went through, we made the effort, and we got him wine. And he ate something. Now, next year again, is an annual visit, he came to town, and again, we didn't have wine for Abdullah. So again, we brought him beer. So he said, oh, that's the case. Obviously, I see that this town, they don't really have wine available, and that's why they bring me beer. If that's the case, it's called the wine of this country, because there is no wine but beer. And therefore you can make Abdullah and says the Rashbam, that's the halacha. But water is never considered Khamar Medina. And that's actually interesting. By water we find this a lot like the Shalchmans we had recently. Like they say even like the sparkling water, it's not considered a chashva mashka. You can't use it as as for Abdullah. And you can't make Abdullah water even if there's no beer or wine. But beer could be considered Khamar Medina. We know that in the place can very you know, what's considered Khamar Medina, no orange juice and and coffee and tea, whatever it is, but if this is what they normally drink as a chashva beverage and there's no wine available, so Abdul Tamid said, I'll make Abdullah and I'll taste something. So it says the Gemara in the class. We learn from this this uh, this um, story three things. This is that we learn Hamabdu with Tfilo. So we have Abdullah during like Tfilo Tsokshi Abdullah Kais. You see what I mean? He he David Nair from Matzah Shabbos. You see, he still had to make Abdullah in a cup of wine. And the Shemam that we learn also, also Abdu Shiyachal Kadu Shabbos, it's forbidden person to eat before he makes Abdullah. You see, he slept overnight. He didn't he didn't eat anything. Because he didn't make Abdullah. And the Shema Minah, we learned the third thing is, Mishli Hibdul Matzah Shabbos, whoever does not make Abdullah Matzah Shabbos, Ma'abd Bahil Kal Shabbos Kuli, could make Abdullah the whole week, as we said, up until Wednesday. Now, as Rashbam points out, we're talking about three halachas, you can learn that from the order of Abdullah, because what do you mean? There's another thing that's a very chash of Alimud, that you can make Abdullah Chamar Medina, even though it's not wine. Why are you saying only those three things? He says, no, that's not counted because we're only talking about regarding the Seder of Abdullah, the order, meaning you already made that bag, made you still have to make a cup of wine. If you didn't make one, could you still make? Or actually, another uh, interpretation of the Rosh Bam is that, no, that's obvious. If there's no other wine in the town, of course it makes sense to make Abdullah on beer than not make Abdullah at all. So that was a milsa of pshita. That it's not even a chiddush to say, of course you can make Hamar Medina. These three things are chiddushim in halacha. Well, Hamar Medina. So that's what we're going to have. That's the Gemara's going to get into discussion right now regarding kiddush. Blame the Rafun Merav It says, Ma'ala Gedusha Sheikh, what's halacha? Could you make kiddush on beer where you don't have wine? Somebody says, Hashto, so Chiz responded, he says, Imar Pirzuma, which was uh, like the bar, actually the beer that we have, which was like barley beer. Vite'ene, or fig beer. Va'asne, or they would make these beer from these berries of a bush. For example, like uh, strawberries. And these are more significant than the regular beer they had in those days, which was just date beer. So all these custom types of beers. The boy named Rav that I asked from Rav, 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 I went to ask from Rav, 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 R
you know, every place he gets his place, he goes to. So I, I, I got to go to him. But like partially, and he couldn't answer him the question to say, hey, if you can make Kiddush on that special custom beer, so shikra, so regular beer that was made from dates, me do you have a question? For sure that's not going to be able to be used for a Kiddush. Now, some know, they thought to say that based on that, yeah, Kiddush you would make a chin Okay, it's fine. Kiddush you cannot make on beer. But you can make Abdul according to Rav on beer. This is what Rav says. Kishem she'ein mekadshin Allah. Which is like you're not making kiddush on the beer. Kachem avdin love you cannot make havdala on a cup of beer. So we we see that there's a big machlekes regarding, as we'll see, not only havdala but kiddush. It manam is such a long amrav takliv by avim amrishlo. It says kishem she'ein mekadshin love. Just like you cannot make kiddush on beer. Kachem avdin love you cannot make havdala on beer. And the Gemara brings a story that actually, but Levi shodali the Rebbe sent to Rebbe Shichra a beer that was bar kleiser magani. What's, it's translated as 13 crushings, meaning the way they process, they make the beer is that they pour water over the dates and then it gives a taste into the water and that's what the fermented beverage is that we call beer. But then in this case, they would put it on other dates and then other dates until they did it 13 times. So that's like they crushed the, the new dates 13 times. That gives a really good taste. It was very flavorful because it had a lot of date taste in the, in the water, in the beer. So Tommy had a lot to do with it. It had, it had a very good flavor. So Amar, so Rebbe said, you're going to this type of beer? Roll the Kaddish love, it's fit to make Kiddush on it. Valeimu love, call shirs with his bachas, to say all praise and thanks to, to God on such a delicious beverage. Now, the story's not over. The problem is, Valeimu love, that night, he, it, was, it was hurting him that beer, it gave him diarrhea. Because dates is a diuretic, it's almost like super zabiyurim and base. Amar, so he said, oive, miyastran, it afflicts, um, and it's going to peace. In other words, something that pains a person so much, do you think that you could be Muratak and Zbokh and say Kiddush on that? And therefore he retracted and says, This is obviously not something that, you know, you, sometimes you regret that it's the morning after that this was not a good idea. Now, similarly, Amr Abiyasi says, Ed Barabi says, I'm going to make a vow in public, which is a vow that cannot be nullified, which Tracy says he hold, he thought that a Ned de Barabim has no afar, but Allah actually is not like that. It's only do Al Das Rabim that's no afar. You do it based on the consciousness and the agreement of the rabbin. But he, he said, I'll make her a nedder the rabbin. The late Shishik, I'm not drinking beer again. He swore off. He says, I'm going to AM. Yeah, I'm done with this. I'm swearing this off. No more beer. Now, I'm a rabbi. The rabbi even did more. He said, Ishti me zoryan. He says, I'd rather drink the water where the flax is like soaking, which that's obviously very disgusting water. Vola Ishti Shik, I'm not drinking beer. That's how uh, the, he was repulsed by the beer. And Bama Rabbi, he says, Tahabi Shakusi Shikra, let a person's beverage be beer, meaning he'll be so poor that he won't be able to buy wine. Mandabikada Shashikra, who makes kiddush on beer. Meaning midi can I get me the it's not a chasha thing, like somehow people think that when they come to Daven, when they come to do certain things, they come uh, in a certain uh, manner, which is not appropriate, but suddenly when you're meeting a business meeting, you mean something then you come appropriately in that type of a, a, a behavior and manner of so that's the same thing. You make kiddush. You make kiddush. You make on wine. You make on beer. Let that be. That that will be the beverage you'll always be drinking. So, in other words, that important lesson that we make on the chashmah, we do the most respectful things when it comes. Like we make on yai and we make kiddush. Now, Rab Afkechir Rab Huna the Kaddish Rab Rab saw Rab Huna making kiddush on beer. Now, even though there was wine in this town, and the reason why he did is because it was dear to him. As the Gemara said before, that Rab would sometimes make on bread. If he was hungry, he would make the kiddush on bread. So at this time, that he was making kiddush on beer. So Amalei said to him, "Shari Abba Lamikne Astiri Mishichra," that it seems like the master started acquiring coins from beer, meaning to say that he started making beer and he started making money on it. So it's very dear in your eyes because this is what's bringing in all the income, and therefore you it's dear you and that you're making kiddush. And just like when you're hungry, you make on bread. So too is this is. This is what's making me wealthy. He says, like, bring the rice to the beer. You know, this is, this is, uh, so that's why he made the, the Kiddush on the, on the beer. Now, there are Linda Brysa, Imakach Nel Aliyai, that you can only make Kiddush only on wine. Vimavarch Nel Aliyai, you only make Bracha on, on wine. So, he says, what? What the Shikh of Amai Milam, the Bachin Shalai Shakh, and the Bob, what do you mean on beer and water? You don't make a Shakh. What do you mean you only make a Bracha when you're drinking wine? So Amabai says, no, this is what I meant to say. We don't say, we don't say, bring a cup, meaning to say, when, let's say you have to make a bracha, so Muslim, to make a bracha, only on wine. So meaning regarding bracha, that everyone agrees that 
you cannot use beer, that has to be wine. I remember we learned the Braisa that in Mekadshin Ela Sheikher, you don't make uh, Kiddush on beer. Rabbi Lozab says, no, Mekadshin, you do make Kiddush on beer. So you see, there's many different opinions. So essentially, up until now, what we saw regarding beer or any Chamar Medina, it seems like we run Bichas and Muslim, everyone agrees it cannot be used. Kiddush was a Machlaikis, and Abdullah was a Machlaikis. Now, moving on to a related topic. So regarding making Kiddush, Mat Emes Yayin, the tasting of the wine, meaning this that we said on the previous stuff, Kofeim Abeis, that whoever makes the bracha has to be Toyim, well, how much do you have to taste? See, if someone makes a Kiddush, a small little sip, and he puts it on the side. What's the halacha? Is that enough? Well, how much do you have to drink? So it's a Machlaikis. Tanakama holds Kalshu, yeah, any amount. You made a bracha and you taste a little bit, it's good enough. Rish Behuda may he disagree, he says, no, it has to be Maloy Ludma. Now, what's Maloy Ludma? Tyson brings from the Gemara, give me that payment Aleph. It means to say that if you would move whatever's in your mouth to one side, it will look like your cheeks are full. But if you're only moving it to one side, so one cheek is filled up with the amount of beverage, which that's less than a Revias. Which obviously, you're making kids only in the Revias, you have to drink Maloy Ludma, because Maloy Ludma, in the plural, the Gemara actually says it's more than Revias. Which Tyson says, how much is a Maloy Ludma? Is a, Majority of Ravias, again for a regular person, like Melchabashan, his cheekbones obviously could be much more, but that's how much a person has to train, has to drink when he made a bracha on, on, on the Krishna bracha, let's say, of Kiddush. Now, Amr Abu Namr Abi says, Rechid Tani Rav Gidl, the Minerish, a Braisa that Hamakadish, someone makes Kiddush, but Toy Maloy Lugma, and he, he drinks, he tastes that of a cheekful, Yatza has fulfilled his obligation. If not, Lo Yatza, he has not fulfilled his obligation, and that's the halacha. And that you have to drink, which is a discussion exactly how much that is, and if a person has to drink, um, rape Christ just as a, uh, to, as, as, to be careful regarding those opinions. Now, Rosh Bam just points out that's only if someone from that sitting around the table didn't drink, but if someone drank, then everyone feels the obligation, even if the guy himself who made the bracha didn't drink, sometimes you have the tata, he can't drink it more here, he sends it over to his young son, he downs it, you know. So then that will also, again, as long as somebody drinks Malay Lugmav on the Kesha Bracha, and that's going to be sufficient. And if they love, lo yotza, and if not, then one does not fill his obligation. Omer Amnath Waitzel says, I'm not Tanim Lai. He says, wait a second, I am the one who taught that Bryce and Nimrod from Git. But I didn't mention that who it is. Lo Yigidl Bar Menashe, who's this Rav Gidl? Not Rav Gidl Bar Menashe. But Lo Yigidl Bar Menyumi, not Gidl Bar Menyumi. E Lo Yigidl Stama. I just said, it's, it's the regular Rav Gidl. Isn't he not one of those of the son of Menashe or Menyumi? So the Gidl Stama, what's the difference who he is? Remember the day after day, to pose a contradiction. If you find ever another of Gidl and Barman Yumi and that says, and you're going to say, oh, it's a contradiction. No, it's not them. It's, the, it's just plain of Gidl. Now, we go back to the Allah of our Mishnah to open up the parak that we said that you're not allowed to eat Arab Sachem, that we said, Samach Lemincha, close to Mincha, a half hour before, you're not allowed to go ahead and eat anything because it's before Pesach. Now, Tyson interestingly says, why is it called Mincha? Why, why we call it mincha? What does mincha actually mean? Mincha means the, the flower offering. So why do we call what we call mincha by the, because of the, that was sacrificed by Nabayim? In the morning, they also had mincha's chavitin, mincha's tamid. Why are we calling the tamid shal ben Abayim, which is what mincha is for, that we call shachras. Why are we calling this mincha? So one shot says it says, because the Gemara says in Brach of Avama Bey, that you should be careful with mincha, because even Elio was only answered regarding his great request only for the tefillah of mincha. And maybe at the time, when the mincha was sacrificed, because by the Tamit Shal Bein Abayim, which is really what mincha is correlated to, there's also a flower offering, maybe at that moment is when he was answered. And that's what we call Tzvil's Mincha, because that's the Shasarat sign of mincha, which is when the mincha, when the flower offering was brought. Some Amaygamar brings here that from the Avod Ram, uh, the, here as Ois Ayin here in the Taish, is that the reason it's called mincha is because the 10th hour of the day that Adam Rishon was created, was when he sinned with the eight sadas, and it says l'ruach hayoyim is when the spirit of the, the day is when Hashem was coming and he, was, he had sin. The targum of l'ruach hayoyim is l'manach yoyma. So therefore, that's the mincha. That's the tenth hour of the day, which is in the afternoon, which refers to l'ruach hayoyim, and somehow that's what we do for the tefillah of mincha. But anyway, that's just, just, just addressing a very interesting question: Why do we call mincha mincha? Now, but with this, we said that Samach Mincha, you're not supposed to go ahead and eat Ibaimu. Which Mincha are we talking about? Samach Mincha Gedayil Itzanam. Is this close to what we call the, the big Mincha, which is six and a half hours into the day, which is when the Tamid Shal Ben Abayim, the, always with two daily sacrifices, one in the morning, one in the evening. Now, 
when you do it the earliest you could do the Tabashak of the mind, like Arab Pesach that falls on Arab Shabbos, which then we said in the Afnum Chesem and Alf that you have to really do it very early because you got to be done everything before Shabbos. So you would slaughter the carbon Tabashak of six and a half hours into the day and then the Pesach after that. So that's what's called Mechagi Daila. That's the earliest you could do the Tabashak of the mind. What is that? Is, is it near that mincha? Or we're doing what's called mincha gitana, which is three and a half hours after midday, which is around, which would, which is three thirty, let's say, on the perfect day, which is when they would normally bring the tumah shabbat the because actually we want to do it as late as possible because we want to actually have all the nedarim and those put before that. So which mincha we talk about? The explains what would be the discussion. Which mincha is? Do we say some mincha Now we're talking about near the mincha gedayla, which is let's say. A twelve o'clock, which is a half hour before twelve thirty, umishlam pesach. And what are we saying? Why you can't eat already from twelve o'clock? Is because maybe if you're going to eat a meal and you're going to be negligent. You're not going to mean the come pesach. The muslim mimshuk. You might be drawn after your meal. You're going to come and bathe. Vaslam nu milam eved pesach, and you're going to prevent yourself from bringing the carbon pesach. Now, Tyson points out that even even though you already brought the carbon pesach, it would still be forbidden because we don't want you to go ahead and you're you're rushing to make the toya meha. And you're gonna make the Karm Pesach Shalai Kuro. So we said you can't eat Arab Pesach because eh, now it's time to bring the Karm Pesach. You shouldn't be e- busy eating now, whether it be before you did it or after you did it. So is that the reason? And therefore that would be by Mechel Gidayla because that's the time of when you start bringing the Karm Pesach. I don't know, no, some Mechel Gitana it's not. No, we're talking about near Mechel Gitana, which it would be after nine hours into the day. Because nine and a half hours into the day is when the Karm Pesach of the all year round was usually brought because it was a little bit delayed. Now, it, regarding the Chagetano, then the way the Rashbam says it, it says we wouldn't be concerned anymore for not bringing the Karm Pesach, because Arab Pesach was already brought already uh, the, on, 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 on Arab Pesach. The Tum was brought eight and a half hours into the day, and the Karm Pesach was brought after that. So therefore, if you come to eat some of the that's after the ninth hour, the Karm Pesach was already brought, never there wouldn't have to be a concern anymore. But so what would be the concern by some of the Chagetano? The Mishum Matzah, for the Matzah, meaning, you might be eating the matzah, what's called a large eating, which is not considered eating because you already ate the whole afternoon and have Pasach. All that, all that, all that, uh, you, you, you ate, you're not, you're not hungry. Now, which as the Gemara says, in, as Tayshu brings, the Gemara brings in human, if you eat a chilagasa, you're potter. It's like, like you didn't eat. Now, Tayshu finds it difficult because the Gemara says in Nazar, that somebody to come Pesach Achille Gasa, it's considered Upeishim Yikashlava. The Gemara says, you're calling him a Rasha? Well, although he didn't do the best mitzvah, but he ate the come Pesach, so wait a second, is Achille Gasa considered Achille or not? So Ben Tam says something very important. He says there's two types of Achille Gasa. One is you're so disgusted, you, ah, you're already up to here, you're not enjoying this at all. But Nebuch, you paid already for that steak, you're gonna, you're gonna down it because it's not going into the garbage. That's Achille Gasa, and that's your part of eating a Mikipur. Then there's another chilagasa. You don't have such an appetite. But you do taste it. You're not, you're not really hungry. So this that we say that, that, that one, one's considered achille, one's not, depends which achilagasa it is. Now this to come Pesach, we say, has to be eaten a la saiva. What does that mean? That means that you still have something of an appetite. I mean, that's supposed to eat it hungry. So it's eat it, not a la saiva. This king, and you already had those little, they, they served you when you come into the Chinese restaurant, the liver, not starving. Now you can come and that's what means, not a la saiva. Or additionally, Tesha says that the reason why you, call, you don't call a person a Russia when he's eating, let's say there's not two types of chiligasa, let's say only one type of chiligasa. So then why are we saying that the, you, you, could, you fulfilled the compass of the eat a chiligasa? Because even if you say the person did not do korin achila, but eating the Pesach is not ma'akir. So he should still fulfill his, his chiv of Pesach. You can't call him a Russia if he ate a chiligasa of the korin Pesach. That was the Gemara's question over there. He still fulfilled it because he doesn't have to have an achila. Because this Pesach is not ma'ak, if you bring your Karm Pesach and you don't even eat it at the end, you're still yates. So that's, uh, that's two, two roots in, in Tyson's answer. Uh, what does it mean? But upon them, what we would say over here would be some of the Mechagitan, the reason why you can't eat, let's say, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they're at Pesach, is because who's eating matzah tonight? I mean, the appetit, if you're eating, uh, you had a nice little meal there in the afternoon. Because, as Rosh Baum explains, that although for Pesach you should also be concerned for Achille Gasa, because as he explains, even though we say Pesach is Nechel al but that's only. Again, where well, you're not starving, but achila gasa is not an achila, and moreover, by kachim, it's actually considered a mazik for eating it in achila gasa. It's not an achila; it's actually just damaging the carbon. You know, like you're basically like putting it into the garbage, like you're human garbage, and you're not you're not even eating. So, but says there's about two answers. He says 
No, there's a difference. I mean, why do we say regarding matzah? Why do we say achil gas is a problem with the carbon pesach too? One is because no, regarding bread, we be getting achil gas by even eating just a little bit. If you're not so hungry, I'm not. I'm not washing. I'm not washing. No, I'm not washing. Why aren't you washing? I'm not so hungry, right? So regarding bread, even eating just a little bit would be considered achil gas. A stick flies. Okay, bring it. I, that I can have room. That's one answer. Or he gives another answer. It's actually a chiddush. Or what the Gemara is saying, no, or maybe some of them say, get down the mini. Even Bizman has a, when there's no carbon pesach, we don't be concerned for making the carbon pesach or eating carbon pesach, but for matzah, they would still be, so we shouldn't have a chilagasa. That's what we're saying, maybe that's the concern. But you're right, of course, the same thing would be regarding that of pesach. So what's the answer? Is it some of the mecha gitano or some of the mecha gitano? So I'm having this touch on my finger right from the following Bryson. The Bryson says like this I feel like Gripas Hamelech, King Agrippus, who Rashbam says was a was an upstanding king from the from the Hashmanoim uh, dynasty or it Malchi Hardis from but Tyson says it can't be because we find that he really was an upstanding king. But be that as it may, the king of the Jewish people, Shuragal Lechel Bateshashash. He used to eat nine hours into the day, meaning in the ninth hour. So let's say between two o'clock and three o'clock in the afternoon is when he would eat his first meal of the day. Now Tyson says some want to say because the Gemara tells us that why do we daven? Why could you daven shachris? Why is Kizman Kriyishma up until three hours into the day? Because that's when kings get up. So he used to get up, not at six o'clock in the morning, he get up at nine o'clock in the morning. Now, moreover, as a kefir does every Tamachuchim. Tamachuchim, the Gemara tells us elsewhere, eats six hours into the day. Oh, so he wakes up like a king, he eats like a Tamachuchim, so therefore, nine hours in the day when he would eat. But they says they can't be because we're going to shortly see that the Gemara says that the ninth hour of Agribus is like our four, fourth hour. But if he's like a Tamil Chacham, it should say the sixth hour. But be that as it may, he would eat his first meal of the day at two o'clock in the afternoon. Now, says the Bryce, even a Gribus on that day, he normally eats in the ninth hour of the day. He shouldn't eat when he normally eats his first meal, his breakfast. He should wait until it gets dark and let him eat by the safe. So the Gemara brings it right like this. If you say Bishlema, that. Yes, it's well well understood. If you say some of the it's not. Now, what's Allah by Mishnah when you're not supposed to hear a Pesach is near Mincha Ketanah, meaning at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? So, I never boosted that Gripus. That would be the Chiddush of a Gripus. In other words, when it says in the Brisa that even a Gripus, meaning even though he didn't eat anything yet today, so thank you, he didn't eat anything. And moreover, it's not the Zaman of the Isser yet in the, in the ninth hour. Meaning, the Isser, what's the ninth hour? The ninth hour is from 2 to 3. The Isser is only. Samach which is three thirty, which just starts at three o'clock after the ninth hour, in the tenth hour. Even so, the Bible would be saying, "No, no, you can't eat because you're starting now. You're going to be going into the time when we say you're not supposed to eat. So fast and don't eat." So that would be the chiddush. Eli but if you say Samach Lamechigdai, let's not know what's the halacha that from twelve o'clock and on is when it's forbidden to be eat to eat. So my reverse that agrippus, and what would be the chiddush of agrippus? That he he also shouldn't eat. Of course, Chal Issa Lamekara. The time of Issa already started from six hours into the day. Why do we have to say that it's us of him? What? Because he didn't eat. You think he could do an Issa? What would be the Chiddush? Already started. No one's allowed to eat right now. If you're saying that it's a Chiddush, he didn't eat yet, and it's also this month didn't start yet, I can understand. But you tell me, okay, but you're going to be going into this month Issa, so you can't. But if it already started, obviously it's Thomas Samachamachitan. But you might ask back on that says, wait a second, Ella, if that's the case, then some of them are going to okay, you tell me that it's Tomat at 3 o'clock is when it starts on the regular Pesach. But then Saif Saif, at the end of the day, my reboots to the Agrippus. And what's the Chiddush of Agrippus? Hamati leiz mami sura. Meaning, as Rishbam explains, what do you mean? It, it already reached the time of the Isser. If you're starting at 2.30, if you're, gonna, you're not ending in a half hour your meal, the Zman of the Isser of 3 o'clock is going to start before you finish your meal. So even Rabbi Yisi that he disagrees regarding stopping there of Pesach in the beginning of the prayer, that he says you don't have to stop your meal, even there of Pesach when you started behet there, but Rosh Hashanah explains, here he would also agree that that would be forbidden, because here your intention is, even though you start before the ninth hour, that you know you're going to end your meal at the time when it's Asr. That's like starting to eat even after this man that it's already Asr, and Rabbi Yisi would agree that it's Asr. So what's the Chiddush Nagribah's death? That's how Vayit the Gemara says, if you know you're going to be going in, of course it would be Asr. Says the Gemara, no. What would you say, Tesha Shah is like Gripus? The ninth hour, meaning between two and three o'clock for a Gripus, since he normally eats his first meal of the day at that time, it's Ka'arba Shoyis di Dan Dami. It's like us eating in the fourth hour of the day, which you're, you're allowed to eat breakfast in Erev Pesach because you'll have an appetite to eat matzah later on that night by the Seder. So he's the same thing, just like we eat in the fourth hour of the day, which is our breakfast, 
his breakfast is at two o'clock in the afternoon. So therefore, since, yes, it's not the time of the Isra yet, we would have thought to say, let him eat in the ninth hour, meaning before three o'clock, let's say between two and three, even though his suit is going to go after the ninth hour, meaning into three o'clock. Kamash Malam, that's what I have to tell you that no, that even a green bus is forbidden to him to eat. But that only would make sense if it's Samach HaMachagitam. But if you would say that it means Samach HaMachagitam, then there's no Kiddush here at all. You can't say, oh, even a green bus. Because what's the reason, according to that shot, that it's Samach HaMachagitam? It's because he might become negligent and not bring the common Pesach, not because of a Chilagas HaMasa. Then you can't say, oh, you would have thought to say the ninth hour of a is like the fourth hour, because what does that mean? The common Pesach you have to bring. It's nothing to do when you, when you eat. So obviously, the Gemara is proving that it's Samach HaMachagitam. And that's when this man of Isser of eating every Pesach is, is at three o'clock, meaning, again, it's shows this man is, but on the perfect day, it would be three o'clock on Arab Pesach. Now, however, the Gemara qualifies this teaching. Although we're saying, not let eat Arab Pesach, Samach HaMech HaKetan and onwards, but Omer, the year says, Rebbe Asi, says, I'm a mitful who, but you could dip and eat, even from Mincha and onwards, but meaning Targima with different types of condiments, meaning, with fruits and meat, as long as you don't wash, as long as you're not eating bread. Now, why is saying dipping? Because the older eating, they always used to do with dips. But it means to say that you could nash, you could eat throughout Arab Pesach. More of he would go ahead and he would dip with vegetables. He would be eating vegetables from Mincha and onwards because either, because it doesn't satiate, so it's not gonna stuff you up, not gonna fill you up, or actually to the contrary, says as well, vegetables actually gives an appetite, actually makes you hungrier. And therefore, he's going to eat me appetite, the matzah, later on by the Seder night. The time is similar in the Braisa, that yes, we eat different types of condiments, Arab Pesach, so it's actually going to draw our hearts, it's actually going to make us uh, hungrier to eat the, the food by the Seder night to eat the matzah. How so? Because the Braisa says, the, the waiter, he would dip with the intestines. In other words, he'd take the intestines of the animals that were slaughtered to eat for the Yom Tov Suda, and he would give it in front of the guests, everyone's coming, nice hotel, Arab uh, Pesach, and put on a nice Torah and all those who accounted for the Karm Pesach, so that they should eat the Matzah and the Pesach with appetite, is too much, yeah, Arab Pesach, even from Milcha Lamala, where, if I can't, eating this food actually gives you an appetite to eat later on. As the Gemara says, although there's no uh, complete proof for this idea that eating actually makes you hungrier to eat more, but there is somewhat of a recollection for this idea, like it says in Yermia. It says, Nir lechem nir. Plow for yourself a furrow, which means plow yourself that row that you're plowing the ground, and therefore, that you won't sow, you won't be planting for the thorn bushes. So what does this mean? So Rashbam says, it means to say that it's giving us a sample of that a person has to first plow the ground so that the, it could accept the seed. If it's not plowed, it cannot accept the seed. Ah, so to a person that eats things that don't satiate him, but it opens up his intestines and it actually expands his stomach so that he should eat the food of the meal afterwards with an appetite. So it's like plowing, it's like opening up so that the seeds could come in. Taisa says a different shot. He says that as long as the thorns are there, so the, the planting doesn't help at all. So here also, it's alluding to the idea that when a person eats a little bit, it makes him hungrier, but if he doesn't eat at all, it's like the thorns there are blocking, then he's like, he has no appetite, and he's not drawn up to eating, it's like throwing a rock into the, into the bag, where it's like, uh, not even sure, but you get him a little in those, that's what appetizers are, what's appetizers? So get the appetite, and it gives you, gives you that appetite, say, you know what, yeah, bring it, yeah. Let's bring out the board, you know, whatever it is. And that's, that's the zeichel of it. This idea that, yeah, they would eat Arab Pesach, I don't know if it means macaroons or whatever, that, but something that, like, gets you hungrier. Now, similarly, the Gemara actually says, Rabbi have a shasi chamer kula mali of the Pesach. He would actually drink wine the whole Arab Pesach. Why? Kehichet did negro lalibe. That it should give him an appetite. The nechel matzah trailer, that they should be eating more matzah on the Seder night. And Amr Rabbi says, Nami where do I get this idea, the chamer big regret that, that wine gives you an appetite? which I think most bars have food over there too, where it's like, why are they ordering if this is a bar? Because it actually gives you an appetite. It's not like, like it says, the mission of Kofi Zayin of a base. As we continue of Kofi Zayin of a base, between these cups of the Seidu night, which is between the first cup, or the Kiddush by Kaddish, and by the second cup, which we say after the Haggadah, and between the second cup and the third cup, which is what we say by Hal, 
In your delicious, if a person wants to drink more wine, Yishta, he could drink. And the reason, as the most thing explained, is because wine actually gives you more of an appetite. Now, however, being Shlish, between the third cup of Birchus and the benching, which that's the third cup, Revi, and the fourth cup of Hal, La Yishta, no, then a person should not be drink, drink between those cups. Why? So the Rav makes two reasons. First of all, we're not concerned anymore for having an appetite because you're not eating anymore after you bench. So, to the contrary, if you're going to drink more, it actually looks like you're adding on to the Dalat Kaisis, which you're only supposed to have Dalat. And he brings from the Yishalmi, actually, a different reason, is because we don't want you to get intoxicated, because then you have to be able to say how. No, so then the Gemara says over the Yishalmi, what do you mean? He's already drunk. He already drank a lot during the meal. He says, no, wine that comes in the meal does not intoxicate. That which comes after the meal intoxicates. And therefore, you're allowed to drink between the other cases, but not between the third and the fourth. But one thing says the Gemara, the Amrit Nisit Sun, but if you think to say that wine satiates, it makes you full. Amai Yishta, why does the why does the um, the Mishnah allow you to drink between the Kaisa? The matzah is only coming later on in the Seder, you can be already full from the wine. No, obviously you can affirm that that no Migr Gar, which Tyson brings from the Gemara and Brachas that actually says, what do you mean, wine? The reason why we said it has its own bracha, which most things don't have their own bracha, is because it's soy is sameach. To the contrary, it fills you up and it makes you happy. So does it fill you up and make you hungry? So the Gemara there says, it depends. A lot of wine actually makes you hungry. A little bit of wine actually fills you up. And therefore, that's why it's different. Now, the Gemara brings a, 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 a raya regarding this samach mincha, which one it is. The Gemara says that Rav Sheshes, have you also komal yom de pischa? He actually would fast the whole Arab Pesach. Now, Tais actually says, no, it's not precise. It doesn't mean he would fast, because he's actually not supposed to fast on any day during Nisan. It just means he would watch himself, you know. Uh, look, but don't, don't touch, you know. He would, he would make sure he wouldn't eat too much. Or, actually, no, he actually was macabre, literally a tightness, so that he should, be, should remember and he should be careful not to eat. And as Tais brings the famous minig that Bechir is the firstborn, they fast in Arab Pesach, as the teacher of Mishnah Masef Tzayfim, because you're not supposed to fast in Nisan. But Bechiris are the one exception, they have Pesach, that they fast, which I mean, is that they don't fast, and they have a seam. But one thing says the Gemara, wait a second, why is Rav Sheshach fasting the whole day, even from the morning? Let's say Rav Sheshach holds, meaning, he holds the reason why you don't eat a normal Arab Pesach is because, close to Mecha Gidele, which is because Mishnah Pesach. What's the reason the Man Dalman says, at 12 o'clock you stop eating? Because of the carbon Pesach. Now, because the whole reason is because you might, uh, you might become negligent, you might not bring appropriately the Karm Pesach. Now, so wait a second, if that's the case, if that's the reason, so I understand why you're not stopping at 3 o'clock, you're stopping at 12 o'clock, why you're not eating the whole day? Ah, because for someone like he had Amr Boishi, Amr Boishi, because he holds like a different teaching. That Maksha, he ben Meseira, Pesach, Shachach, to Shachris, Baba, Asla, Shmai. Because according to Ben Meseira, if you bring the Karm Pesach in the morning, which no one else holds, everyone holds it has to be after the Tamach al Bain or Bayim, he holds no, even if you bring the Karm Pesach in the morning of the 14th for the sake of being Karm Pesach, that that's also valid. Because even in the morning, it says Erev Pesach, and Yudal, you bring it, even in the morning, it's Karsh of the Karm Pesach. The Kul Yerach of the Pesach, all day is fit for the Karm Pesach. Why? Because there's something he holds, and when it says in Shemayi, if you bring a Bain or a Bayim, so we usually learn Bain or Bayim, it's to say, but when it's between the evenings, when it starts turning evening, when it goes from midday to the west, until it finally becomes evening. He learns differently. He says, what's Bain or Bayim? It means, being Erev de Etmo, meaning when yesterday's evening ends. When does yesterday's evening end? By Alois Hashacha. Amur Hashacha, when the break of dawn is yesterday's evening, the Erev de Etmo, to today's evening. That's, well, that's essentially from morning till night. That's what Bain Rabbi, between the evenings. Between yesterday's evening and today's evening. Oh, that's why he would fast the whole day. Now, although, as Rashbam points out, there was no compensation in his days, but once we said it's Asr, it remains Asr, because of the primary halacha of not eating Erev Pesach. So you see that he holds that for our mission of Mitzvah Mechel Law because it's regarding Karm Pesach, not regarding Matzah, not having appetite, it's regarding negligence, regarding Karm Pesach. And, and since you could technically bring the Karm Pesach even in the morning, yeah, okay, so then you can't eat that either. And although there's no Karm Pesach in this day, but, but that was the Isra, which remains. So you see it's actually Samach Mechel Gidoy Law. So the Gemara, Amri they said, no, you could really say it's because of Mechel Gitana, and it's because of, you're not going to have an appetite to eat Matzah. That, 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 that cracking Matzah is not something, if you're not really hungry, you're not, it's like eating pretzel after a tainus. You're going to really enjoy it. If you're not, you're not going to eat it. So then what was with Rav Shesha? So if it's, if it's 3 o'clock, it's because of the matzah, and not in Pesach, which would be noon and for sure in the morning, why is he fasting the whole day? The Gemara, and this is actually important halacha, which is halacha lamaisa for every Arab Shabbos even, Shalim Rav Shesha is different. The istin is hava. He was very sensitive. 
the time itself immediately eat something in the morning in the evening he wouldn't enjoy the food he wouldn't be eating the matzah with an appetite in the evening and therefore that's why he didn't eat all day which is the case if someone is like that type of a person you know those people they say oh i'm not hungry well in the morning i had like a coffee and a danish but what but that that's why now you're not hungry yeah i can't eat anymore so that type of person has to actually be careful and not eat the whole day i never pass up because again the idea is to come to the same night with the oven to have the matzah with an appetite to eat it with a geschmack we want to eat the, the the mitzvah in that in that idea today somebody just discussed in today's office so enough of zion was we said Abdullah has to be on wine or Chama Medina, a uh, beverage of that country, which in Talmudic times, that was beer. Now, we learned three things that whoever made Abdullah in Phyllis still has to make a cup of wine. It's forbidden to eat before Abdullah and also that you can make Abdullah the whole week, again, which we said that's really up until, uh, until Wednesday, not including uh, Wednesday. And we said you cannot make Kiddush on beer, but we say ultimate some achlekis. There's some achlekis really good. Abdullah, could you make Abdullah on beer or not? But regarding Birchas Hamazen, it seemed that everyone agreed that you cannot make Abdullah, you cannot make Birchas Hamazen on a cup of beer. Now, regarding tasting the wine, so you have a if it's a new demand, or it's a cheekful, which is like tasted a Reva Revias. We say, now like here Pesach, this is what the Mishnah said on, on Samach Mincha. Now, the question is, which Mincha? Do we mean that you cannot eat Samach? Is it Mecha Gedoyla, which is already at 12 o'clock, meaning Mecha is 12.30. Samach is a half hour before it. Now, why can't you eat already at 12 o'clock? Because Karben Pesach is when you're bringing that. You might become negligent, not bring it. Or is it Mecha Gitana because it's for the Matzah? Because the Matzah, you're not, you're not hungry anymore. It says, oh, I already had the kids already. Said, well, my way, look, I worked on this child dole. I pretty much had food. I put in, you're not eating anything. So, you know, this the groaning board, you know, it says, I can't. Right, so the yeah, matzah, you have the matzah, we don't need every pesa. Now the Gemara brought a raya from Agrippus, who he used to eat in the ninth hour, which is between two and three o'clock, that he would eat, even he's not supposed to eat. Obviously the Chiddush is, it's, it's the man milch ketana, that even though it starts at three o'clock, okay, but you're eating at 2.30, you're gonna go in and you can't, because it was milch ketana, what have I say, so of course, it's already started, of course you can't eat, that's my past. So obviously it's milch ketana, and that's the Chiddush of Agrippus. Now, but the Gemara said, but you could eat different types of, of, uh, of, of a meat, you could, you could ask a little bit of uh, uh, food, vegetables, the, the, the liver, the certain type of intestines, the kishka, and uh, even wine, which Tyson explained, a lot of wine, which gives the person an appetite that not only can you, it seemed like they wanted to because it actually gave them an appetite to be eating uh, the matzah with a, with a geschmack later on that night, as the raya for that is, as we see by the Seder night, that you lot of drink. Uh, between the Kais Rish and the Kais Shein, the Kais Shein and the Kais because again, it gives the appetite, and it's not going to be Achil Gaza by the time it comes to the Matzah. In contrast between the third and the fourth, which you're not eating anymore, and we actually you might become drunk and you might not say how, then we don't let you drink between the third and the fourth. Now, there's no Raya from Rabshashis that he didn't eat from the morning, which obviously then he held his milk, because you see, wait a second, there's a to come Pesach, and he must hold like that opinion, hold it, giving come Pesach all day. No, he was an Istinist, and therefore he was very delicate and sensitive, and therefore being in the morning, he couldn't even eat the matzah with a geshmak at night, and that's why he didn't eat, but again, it's still, like we said, milk because it's all about the matzah, we want you to have a geshmak, and how you eat the matzah, shal it's the oven, that we should be able to eat mitzah shem, mishalayim. Thank you, 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 thank you